Okay, so part three for this video series is the alternator. Um, I got lucky the other day. I went to pull apart, which I know some people will cringe about, but I got new alternator for my car. Well, new for me alternator for my car, I should say. Uh, on the first try, got one that worked. Took it up to AutoZone. Had them test it out for me. They don't have to have, be in the car for autos and to test it. They have a machine that'll do it. They pop it in. It's a three-step process. It'll let you know if your alternator is good or bad. That one passed on the first try. Um, my old alternator, uh, as soon as they popped it in the machine, the machine starts screaming failure and shut off. So that's a pretty good indication there was a problem with it right there. Um, this is a video Hopefully it's going to be pretty short for you, but this is going to be a pretty basic install. I've got to put that alternator down into this spot right here. You can see between the hoses, there's bolt one on the left, bolt two, and then bolt three down there on the bottom. And then I've got to pull that belt back up over the tensioner, which is right there the same as before this is basically just doing the whole process in reverse you got the socket 3 8 socket hole down there and that's going to be about it it's going to be a pretty quick video i hope I'll try to give you a basic rundown and then i'll test the car once i've got the alternator plugged in and i know it's secured and all the electricity which is those two wires right there and the negative cable are plugged back in. Um, for the purpose of this video, it's not bolted back in yet, but I put the uh, radiator grill cover back up. That way you can see basically how it would be to take it out of a normal car. In my case, I had to take this off to get the radiator out, and I was doing the alternator at the same time, so it gave me extra room. It's a little tighter of a fit with this top cover on, but uh, I went ahead and put that back on just so you can kind of get the idea of what the spacing looks like. And of course I didn't put the radiator hoses back on yet either, haven't folded the radiator, I'll do that in another video. Okay, so this process is going to be pretty painless, and at least in my car, um, it's going to vary from vehicle to vehicle, but it should still be a pretty easy job. In this case I have one electrical connection here, sensor connector here, and bolts one, two, three, and the pulley. Now I'm going to just move right around to the back to the front of the car. You can see there is bolts one, two, and threes down there, and then there's your belt hanging off to the back end there. So I would literally just take this in the same order it's sitting that I have it now, bring it forward, put it into that spot, get the bolts in place, and then get the belt pulled back over it. So this is, uh, unfortunately I don't have any help recording this, so I'm probably not going to be super in-depth detail with recording because this is a little more hands-on than the radiator. <laughs> but this shouldn't be a very long process and you can get the general idea of how to do this. Um, I'm not going to try to run the radiator yet. I haven't hooked up any of the hoses. There's the lower hose there. Upper hose connection's right there. Obviously the cap is still off. I haven't done this. I've got to put that container back in for the radiator as well. So I could get all that stuff reassembled. And as I mentioned, I did leave the front of the car back on just so you get a better idea of how it is to actually take this out of a car or put this into a car with everything properly assembled. And as I said earlier, I had to take out my alternator at the same time as my radiator. So I had to take off that protective guard and I didn't have a front bumper to begin with, so I didn't have to worry about that, which is part of the normal process. Uh, now, as I mentioned in the previous video though, this hood latch had to be detached from this metal piece and as you can see here, it's just held in with two bolts. And you just got to make sure those line back up properly. 
Uh, just leave it slightly loose, adjust it, try to close your lid. If it locks in place, you know, you're good. Tighten down the bolts, you're good to go. Um, as usual, and I still haven't put this stuff back on, make sure your negative cable is off. And that does have a rubber grip on it, so I have it sitting. It's actually grounded. And though it's probably not necessary, I went ahead and took off the positive jump start attachment cover as well, just so there's no possibility of connection. Um, once I get the alternator in, I have that plastic cover right here, which has the electrical connection for that post. And then I have this sensor connector, which goes below it. So I'm gonna pause this for a second so I can get the process started. And I'll show you the steps as I go through. And real quick before I start this, a uh, good tip I found online, which should be a good obvious that you might want to think about beforehand is check your connections on your alternator bracket down there and your screw holes on the actual alternator itself. Make sure they don't have a lot of rust or grime or dirt on them. Um, I got really lucky with this one. It's actually fairly clean and even the connections inside my car are clean. So if you wanted to clean them, you could use a wire brush and I'll get into the grooves and everything. You don't want to do too hard. You don't want to take away metal. Or you can just use good old fashioned sandpaper. Don't use anything too high grit. I've got a, this one's 120, but uh, for my purposes, if I were going to use it, I'd only need it for a couple seconds. Now you can see I've got six bolts here. There's only three for the alternator, so there's no confusion. When I went to pull apart to get this alternator, I took the bolts with me. That way, in case there was an issue with the bolts I had in my car, where maybe one was too short for the newer version or whatnot, that everything would line up perfectly. But it's just, this is one of the odd cases where all three bolts, um, all three bolts from the old radiator, or sorry, from the old alternator and from the new alternator are the exact same size. Sometimes you'll have one that's longer. Sometimes you'll have, you know, maybe a shorter one in there. This is pretty even across the really board. Really quickly here, I didn't have to do this when I took the, uh, the alternator out because I already had the radiator out and the front cover off. But now that I don't have the extra ground clearance, so to speak, um, I need to, and you'll probably have to do this with yours too if you're doing the same car, is there is a, if I get a view there, that hose right there underneath the radiator top hose, this radiator top hose outlet. This hose right here is for the water pump, I believe. Uh, I need to unhook that and pull it back so that I can get to the alternator brackets and then I'll pop that back in place. And this clamp right here is pretty common for this car. Uh, most cars in general, it's an easy remove that they put on in the factory. If this is the original hose, um, it's never been taken off and I do any kind of maintenance work, that clamp will probably not come off very easily. So you'll want to hit it with some WD-40 now you start uh, working on this and you find that the hose is damaged once you pull that clamp off or the hose won't come off at all and you end up having to cut the hose for some reason. You'll want to take it to an auto supply store like Advance or Auto Parts, you know, Advance Auto Parts or AutoZone or whoever else might be local that supplies hoses. And this is the kind of thing they keep in the back in like a huge reel where they just cut you off a length and then you bend it to fit back into place. Or it could be a matter of, it's a pre-molded hose, uh, so the there's gonna be a price differential somewhere in there, possibly. If it's they take it off a reel, it's per foot. If it's pre-molded, it's gonna be a set price. Uh, but you'll wanna double check for any cracks and any damage to this when you go to unhook that to get your alternator back into the bracket down there. Okay, as you can see, I got that clamp to move. This is what I was talking about with the hose. Let me get my view down here. You can see how it's all like molded into place and it's pretty well stuck, or it looks like it's stuck. 
Now if this was new, I should just be able to wiggle this, or in better shape I should say, I should just be able to wiggle this and get it to come loose. This tells me that this hose is kind of old and set in its ways and my best bet is I'm probably going to have to replace the hose on this just because it's most likely the same age as the hoses that came off my radiator to begin with and if that hose blows that's part of my water pump system that means I'll have fluid spraying all over my car again uh, I do not want that so for right now for today since I already have this front piece actually disconnected I'm just going to go ahead and pull that off set it to the side reach up underneath uh, put the new alternator in and then probably make a trip to AutoZone on like Wednesday or Thursday and pick up a replacement hose and once I do that I'll let you know the price one of thing it. before I forget here if you want to avoid changing your hoses for the time being um, if you are pretty sure that they're good if you squeeze them while the card is while the car is cold there shouldn't be a lot of give to it see like on here for the hoses for the cooling system they're pretty solid but this has got quite a bit of flex to it I can almost squeeze it in half and to me that tells me the hose is wearing out they are reinforced and ribbed and all that but uh, if they blow they blow pretty badly either they'll split down the side or split through the middle um, when my bottom radiator hose blew it looked like somebody took a knife blade and just ran it across the bottom of the blade uh, across the bottom of the hose and it just started pouring fluid out the bottom there so when it's, unfortunately in my case if this one blows that's right next to a lot of electrical connectors and obviously there's the main part of my engine whatever amount of pressure is in that line will shoot fluid all over my car and could potentially cause more damage so I'm thinking I'm gonna go with better safe than sorry and uh, see about replacing that hose this week as I mentioned I only have one bolt in at the moment just to show you how it's supposed to look but uh, when you put the bolts in start them off hand tight that way you can get all the holes lined up properly they're all going to be in slightly different positions so get one in hand tight and then check the top of the bracket which you can see right there all the way back you can tell that the uh, screw housing the bolt housing is flush with the female insert on the actual bracket so we're good I got to tighten down the other two and then I'll do the electrical connections and put back on the battery cables and that'll be it okay and you can see that the alternator is securely back in place I find my socket here you can see it's not turning anymore so that should be good. There is a foot-pound specification or an inch-pound specification you should use for this. Uh, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. It's not very high, though. Uh, if you look it up, you probably find it in the service manual for your car or your owner's manual, maybe. Uh, probably a quick Google search will help you out with that as well. Then from here, I'm going to leave those electrical connectors off just for the moment until I get the belt back on. And then I will reattach the electrical connectors. So that's like I said, that's a pretty easy process on this. I just got to pull that belt back up, bring it back over that pulley for, there's the pulley for the alternator. So there's the alternator pulley right there. Just need to bring that belt back up over that. And I'm going to use this handy dandy serpentine belt puller which is a 3 8 inch socket head on this side it's going to fit it right down in there as I said before just going to pull that off to the side pull that belt back over the top and then the belt will be in place and just got to make sure it's lined up on the pulleys correctly 
And there you go. You can see the belt is back on in place. Back over to pulleys as it should be. And this turned into a two-man job. I had assistance for a minute. Uh, I actually pulled the uh, pulley to where it needed to be, and it caused the belt to slip more than it needed to. So I uh, had to get assistance out here for a minute to work on it but they should always be on those tracks there's guides inside the pulley there you always want to stay on the tracks in there and uh rib side in so it catches onto those tracks up and around this is a four pulley system if i'm not mistaken well i think it's five you've got alternator you got your tensioner there's a, another pulley below that, so yeah, it's a four pulley system. Now, this is a pretty simple process here. Uh, there is a bolt that I need to grab for this piece right here. That slips over there, and you can even see there's a little notch there which drops into there. And then that uh, sensor connector right there goes into there. And then I've got to plug the negative cable back in, which is there. And I'm going to cover that positive jump start back up as well. And that should be everything for the alternator. All right, there is the electrical connection for the alternator. This, of course, still have the negative battery cable off. But you can see where that little clip drops into the slot there and just loops over the top. Just drop that bolt back on top there. And that is a 13 millimeter connection. So I'll change that out real quick. And should be good. All right, so 13 millimeter bolt. And that was almost perfectly on there just from finger tightening it. That's on. Throw that over. And you put that protective cap back on top. And this clip is only going to go in one way, which should be like this. And there you go. And that's on. Now I'm going to plug those in, plug that in, and then I'll at least see if I have any electricity coming to my car. That's the next test. Okay. So the alternator is installed, the crossbar for the radiator is installed alternator is installed and all the electricity is hooked up again that's all set to go the unfortunate thing is my car was sitting long enough that I do not have any power to my battery so I have to wait for a jump start to even test out to make sure it's working you got to put the radiator hose back in top radiator hose got to go back in got to put the overflow container back in and then I'll give it another shot. I'm sure everything's working fine, but uh, you know, you gotta test it and make sure everything's working. Part of the problem before I got around to starting to replace all this is the radiator had that damage which was causing it to leak and then my system was also overheating. So I have to give it a shot and see exactly how she's doing now. That should probably be the next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this, click that like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell for more notifications about upcoming videos, and uh, we'll see you soon. More, got at least four more videos coming up on the series, including I'll do a video just on the radiator hose hookup and fill. I'll do a video to show a follow up for the alternator and for radiators, show everything's working properly radio installation, wiring harness installation. Um, wiring harness installation is for the door. New replacement side mirror. And that should be it for now. Thank you.